Great Flood. And we're not talking about 11,000 years ago or 13,000. We're talking about the Great Flood of data today. The data deluge. Deluge. What is... So let me... A deluge of data is gathered that can rapidly swamp IT and HR systems. Yeah. This is from shrm.org. Uh, website here and it's talking about sensors internet of things devices that are hooked up the computer systems the networking all of this automation gets added it's really cool but it's overwhelming systems and so organizations what can they do to harness this data well the thing is that it's like drinking from the fire hose <laughs> yeah it's like, you remember those dogs that get their cheeks all fucking yeah it's just all it's blasting them but you know that's the point you set up all these new streams, right? So if all these rivers are pouring in, how do you deal with the new flow rate? Mm -hmm. And that's why you get the deluge, right? It's like it's going to too much data for some companies if their teams are not ready for it, if their systems or workflows are not appropriate to it, will overwhelm them. Yes. One thing they could do is go to Tartle and say, okay, rather than us just ingesting all the streams all at once and then figuring out, why don't we go to Tartle and buy these streams only when we need them mm -hmm. piecemeal from the yes. individuals who create them? I love this. Yes. And then let Tartle deal with the housing and all the, the, the flows of the water and all that that's going on there. And we'll just pull from the stream, right, by buying into it when we need it rather than let's just suck it all up at once. Oh, my God, we can't handle it. It's actually we're doing a disservice to our company by thinking that just ingesting all these feeds is beneficial for us. Yeah, and, and they were talking about, especially in the HR department in particular. So let's say that um, you have, they were talking about Microsoft Teams, uh, as well as a host of other systems to track employee behavior, keystrokes, activity levels, morale, and employee it's sentiment. It's insane. So as these organizational network analysis begin to happen, we're identifying communication, we're identifying social te uh, technical uh, networks within an organization and then you know even tapping into some people are even tapping into employees fitbits and apple watches to make sure that they keep uh, hr side to keep wellness costs down this new flood augments an hr department that is already equipped with all these tools that hr is known for you know just subscribing to all these Everything different types the of sun. yeah tools so it's like yeah we have we've captured all this data we've stored all this data we have government identification numbers. We have dates of birth. We have payroll. We have bank details. We have benefits. We have medical information. We have background checks. And that's just the beginning of everything that we have <coughs> on that person. Excuse me. So there's no doubt that this data is exploding. And what do these departments do with it? Especially like HR. What do you do with all the sensitive data they that you're collecting? They're not data scientists. They're an HR department. They don't know what to do. It's going to bog them down. Then you start forcing people that are specialists in HR to get into data analysis. Yeah, and, and it doesn't that, work. And that's what we're talking about. It's like this growing mountain of HR data is analytics. So now you have analytics applications in these many areas. But who uses analytics mainly? In a, in, and this is what the article is talking about. It's mainly high level management and marketing. Mm -hmm. That's it. Are the two that use analytics? So the HR department's not looking at all the data they're collecting. They're just collecting data. Yeah, and so. How do you have leading organizations? How do you have vendors? How do you have this surge of data that's coming to you? But then here, here's where Tartle comes in. How do you prevent data misuse? Perfect. Data misuse is saying, well, I have all this stuff. I'm just going to start appropriating it to whatever. Okay. The first thing you don't want to misuse is people's rights to their data. Yes. You're going to buy it through Tartle. And then you're only going to get what you need just to start. Mm -hmm. Tell you got a handle yes. on how you're going to use these things, okay? Start with what you need first. Don't have some other company come up to you and say, we'll start analyzing this. You need more data streams. We'll give you analytics. Don't waste your money doing that. Simply go to the source of the information, the source of the river, okay? Mm -hmm. Understand. Establish the relationship first. HR is about people, right? Period. Simple as that. Humans. All you got to do is connect with that human. Mm -hmm. So start simply. And then later, if you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe I need a new additive data stream. Start getting a new data packet from those people. 
Don't go to all these million different providers yes. offering you all different formats under the sun, trying to understand what's going on, make it all complicated and shiny with graphs and shit like that, get you all sold and you're all pumped up showing your boss. Eh. Not the way to do it. It's wasteful. It's ineffective. It doesn't benefit both parties. Well, and that's what's funny in the article is they're saying, hey, you need machine learning. You need that's what I mean. AI. You need deep learning platforms. And then on top of that, you need to have these new technology solutions so you can sell, scale and accelerate. You know, these are all buzzwords. You need a bigger ship to yes. ride this monster wave. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you got to get a new type of mast. Oh, that mast? There's going to be an increased amount of winds. You're going you're gonna to need bigger sails now. Oh, that rudder? Far too short for the length of this hull. Yes. We're going to have to spruce that up. And then you got this thing, this Frankenstein, that's been stuck together trying to swim in the ocean. When all you got to do is just, here's your buoyant little craft. Ride the waves. Don't try and, like, navigate through them. Just let them move with the flows, the ebb and flow of these things. The best way to do is establish the flow from the people who generate the flow, human beings. And in, in, in HR, you don't need all these backdoor programs and all Tracking this third-party passive-aggressive have, when you can just go to the person and ask, have a wellness data packet. How are you feeling this week? Yeah. Wow. Do you want to talk about it? Do you need resources? You can do it all in one shot. Well, remember we uh, we talked about direct primary care. You know, and there's, there's and I feel like that's going to be a surge in, in healthcare, decentralized healthcare, you mm -hmm. know, to get away. So having for, especially for wellness stuff, having one of these nurse practitioners, physician assistants with direct primary care that's contracted to the organization. Let's say it's a Microsoft. They could have 20 of these and have a little nursing facility or whatever there on staff. You could have, you know, I mean, obviously schools have this, yeah. you know, but they're centralized. But having these little decentralizations, you know, and then having them, having them look at the data, bring that person in and having that human to human t contact. Right. You know, and then they could even have, because this is the beautiful part about Tartle. Those people could even have inside the organization, even though they're being contracted out to Microsoft, they could have data packets also. Absolutely. They're speaking directly to those employees. Absolutely. There's no reason you can't do that. It's an effective, well-balanced system. Yes. And if there's a great flood, take a ride on the Tartle <laughs> lifeboat.